haven't even had a match tonight, but I'm still working out because I have nothing else to do. What am I going to do? That's what I do. What am I going to do? Play the guitar? I can't play the guitar. All I do is beat people up. I question myself, what is Bully Ray's motivation? You know, I love he. I know he loves sugar, but I check my pocket. I don't have no donuts. I don't have no cheeseburger. I know you love sugar, but I ain't got none. And welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing. We chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay per view by pay per view. This is your boy, the waistcoat host, Jay Hunter. The breakfast roll on the pole, V1. That's the crack. And the king of the one ring, OC. It is. It's OSW TNA Turning Point 2008, and it's coming up right now. <laughs> Welcome, Noggers! Happy days are here I just want to update people, just because I make it a point on our podcast in general to never ask for like and subscribe and ring the bell and all that bollocks. I hate, I hate, so I hate, doing, I I hate, hate hearing it. it. I would like the result of it. And you're forcing me to rethink it because when we asked about it on Ben for Glory, it was our single biggest day for wow. subscribers ever. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you can do it then. Okay. You can do it. Um, yeah. Our oh, biggest I hate one it. I know. I, I you know what? Do it. You know what, Jay? Yeah. Stop. Steve, stop. I will take it. You're going to do it. Listeners, like, comment, subscribe, you fucking animals. All right, but not share. Do you, do you want them to share as Wait, well? Wait, is there a bell involved? What about the bell? Share, share, bell. share yeah. retweet, quote, tweet. I, I, I don't want it. I uh, don't want it this way. <laughs> <laughs> what other things can you do? What do you do on TikTok? Uh, we're, we're not on TikTok. No, we're not. <laughs> I, I you, don't s- used to dancing in your sitting room. <laughs> <right>? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we are on the road to 200k and we are at 193. Wow. Yeah. Pay-per-view start. Turning point opening package. Expounding the main event mafia's viewpoint. Young lads don't know how to act towards the stars. If I wrestle for TNA, Spike TV will pick us up. I wouldn't recognise Samoa Joe in the airport. I died. (laughs) Failing the airport test. (laughs) Like, see, Samoa Joe, he needs to, when he had the belt, just have the belt in his carry-on and then the airport security will recognise him then. Ooh. Like you used to do. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you had a look at it. Yeah, so I got stopped by security, and it's like, what's this big metal thing in your bag? And it's like, oh, yeah, that's my, my world title. Like, <laughs> Not my, I did buy it for Chop Zone. It is mine, technically. <laughs> I didn't win it. <laughs> and your man wanted a picture with it. It's like, yeah, yeah, here you go. It's no, I want a picture of you. Oh, you want evidence, bollocks. <laughs> but this is before social media, so I got away with it. Yeah. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Who's Samoa Joe? If I saw him in an airport, I wouldn't recognize him. Stretch Homer Limo out pops the main event mafia. I, I like. I thought wrestling companies would have banned Hummers after WCW's infamous white Hummer angle. Uh, the one that changed color kind of mid angle and then it ended up being a black Hummer. Oh, Steve, let me tell you all about it, mate. WCW 1999, Macho Man Randy Savage and Kevin Nash refuting for Nash's world title. Macho got sewage dumped on him, and so, oh, I'm furious, I'm out for revenge. Nash gets into a limo, whammo, White Hummer smashes into it. Is Macho charged with vehicular manslaughter? No, it's because it's, it's on TV. There you go. Is Nash out for months? 
No, they wrestle each other next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sid and Nash. So people thought Sid was the driver. Then fake stings were shown sitting in the Hummer. Savage said to Nash, hey, let's wrestle at Bash at the Beach and I'll tell you who it is afterwards. By the way, this was a tag bout with the title on the line so you could pin your partner and win the world title that way. You could pin your partner? Yeah, yeah. It was like a tornado tag thing. That just sounds like a fatal four-way. Mm, but it's, it's a tank. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Savage won anyway, never mind. But he didn't say who it was. And then it kind of got hazy because Savage would just mention it off and on again in passing in the months afterwards and then just kind of fizzled. No, Lex Luger showed up and claimed Hulk was the driver. Here is footage incriminating Hulk, but the Hummer is black, not white. So immediately, no, it isn't. Oh my god. And also, um, Nash was gone from WCW at this point, so who, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what was this, 99? Yeah. yeah. A year later, Billy Kidman and Eric Bischoff attack Hogan with a Hummer and imply Easy e is the original Hummer driver, despite him helping Nash win the belt before the original attack. So he was mates with Nash and got him the belt. Okay, so it's been going a long while now. Who else have we got? Who could it be? How about Sable? She just left the WWF. Ah, no, she's in a, under a no compete. Ah. How about Carmen Electra? Ooh. Nash's mate. WCW were like, whatever we do, it's going to be a letdown. So let's just like go radio silent and have a think. And then... The reveal? No... Eric Bischoff quietly drops the angle entirely. Just runs away from it, that's it. Uh, it's like the <laughs> corporate ministry Vince nonsense. Like, yeah, yeah, so why not just pretend it didn't happen, you know? Do the, the Booker T angle, like, with the, um, I, know I know what you what did. did yeah, 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 just fucking move on, like. <laughs> just get on with it. Yeah. So were WWE and WCW running who ran over someone in a car? angles at the same time because they did one for Austin right yeah yeah very good yeah, yeah. Survivor Series yeah, yeah. wouldn't he's the bad bad man yeah I'm a bad man bad man bad thoughts whenever they think of me pretty hard I did it for The Rock what there was no plan it was a stunt. It was kind of like a one-off. It was designed to put, you know, fear and, and possibly injure Kevin Nash going into his match. It was just a storytelling device and in a way to raise the stakes in that particular story. There was never a plan to have a secret person behind the wheel. It just, it just wasn't. It was an autonomous hit and run is what it was. Set up, of course, by Savage. Back in 2008, WCW, TNA, all the lads dismissed JB for shame, except for Scott Steiner, which promo-wise is honestly the best it could have gone. He can't wait to cut a promo here. You know, he kind of misses his mark. He's supposed to walk on with the lads and JB's supposed to grab him, but he kind of hangs around and then starts walking away and then stops. <laughs> but yeah, he he's like, I've got nothing to do on this show, so this is his yeah. spotlight. He's like, hey, uh, JB. Sniff me. <laughs> you like that smell. It's the smell of winners. <laughs> great. He's brilliant. I smell greatness. See, main event mafia, we are the greatest collection of world champions to ever come together. And we've come together for one reason, respect. Respect for each other and respect for this business. See, we've earned our respect night after night, year after year. We paid our dues. So you can imagine our, our shock. When we come to TNA, we go in the locker room, these guys are reading comic books, grabbing their joysticks, and playing their video games. See, they disrespect us, the very people that paved the way for them. It's TNA Turning Point, 9th November 2008, from Orlando, Florida, in front of 1100 in the HD Impact Zone, with 20,000 TVs tuned in at home. Commentators are the TNA Cornerstones, Don West and Iron Mike Tenay. No audio revelation, as Tenay blares into our ears and blows out the mic. 
<laughs> Don West, you can hear the echo. He's coming through the house mic and not the TV. Yes. Tonight, live from Orlando, Florida, the battle for power rages on. For the first time, the brand new Legends belt will be at stake, as well as Christian Cage's freedom. It's been a year in the making, and it's all about revenge. Kevin Nash against Samoa Joe. And the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It's the icon Sting defending against the phenomenal AJ Styles. Our inaugural contest is the 10-man X Division Elimination Rankings match. <laughs> Drum reveal music. Uh, got it backing track you'd expect it you know um fear factor if they're telling you uh, the crazy thing you're gonna have to do to to win eat like, his pig yeah. rectum if you don't eat it i will yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, baby. Throw up, baby. Throw up. oh is he x division 10 man can you name the participants i love the question jay I love the question. So we have got Jimmy Rave, Black Machismo, Sanjay Dutt, Austin uh, Consequences Creed, EY, Doug Williams. Got... Were the guns in this? No, oh, they couldn't because they were wrestling later. Stacked X Division. PD Williams. Yeah. Uh, Pentagon Senior. Um, uh, was he not in Bologna. this match? Yeah, Pentagon yeah. Senior. <laughs> <laughs> Penta's dad. Yes. <laughs> and we have Tanahashi. Tanner. Yes. One more. Uh, homicide. Yay, there we go. There well we done, go. sir. Well done. Well done. By the way, is this the first time we've covered Doug Williams? It yes. is. Yeah. Big fan. Doug Williams is the wrestler Dave Taylor should have been. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think of Williams coming out in his England jersey like a fucking lout? <laughs> Yes. Good heel heat. I did love that it's uh, Umbro sponsored, so we get a little Umbro knacker on the show. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. This shows the allure of DNA has all over the world. Oh, he's going to have a barn burner tonight, lads. Don't you wait. Shout out to one dude with a Tanahashi poster. Final participant, Black Machismo. And he he comes a, you know, wheel him out here. And then it dawns on you, like, he won the Steel Asylum Red Cage match last month at Bound for Glory, had his title shot on Impact, and he's thrown back into the pool <laughs> of X Division, everyone's. Yeah, no growth, no moving on. Honestly, the frontline angle for him was a massive anchor, because he, he was getting over, and then they were like, unfortunately, you... Creed and Eric Young have to be the job guys for this new super faction. So best of luck getting over, Jay. Oh, also TNA, where the pay per view builds to the TV show, <laughs> and so you you get the important part, which is the title match on the free TV. So does that make this a must miss pay per view? <laughs> <laughs> Austin Creed and OC's boy Jimmy Rave kick off with a collar and elbow tie-up and a bit of Matt Wrestling reversal reversal, which lasts about 40 seconds before, no, no, I'm done with that, regular fodder, strikes and clotheslines. Austin Creed does like a nice arm ringer, jumps down, does the splits and he like pulls his arm. That's cool, mate. More of that, please. Haven't seen that before. Sanjay in with an around the world head scissors on Jimmy Rave. Phenomenal. Lethal straight in to confront him and Dutt slides out of the ring and into wearing the face off so <laughs> Calval, sticking it to Machismo's former missus. Popped huge. Machismo gets the last laugh with a suicide dive and the crowd erupt into TNA chants. I do love how kissing is heelish, you know? Who is the best at being a heel kisser? Ooh. Edge. Yeah, I was oh, Edge and Lita. Oh, because he, he's like a bulldog chewing a toffee. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, diggity! I'm gonna smooch you like a mule eating an apple. <laughs> We're showing the rules. Lucha rules. If you leave the ring, no tag needed. Someone else can just enter. I As, like that. Yeah. I, you know, simple, but um, just stops time wasting. Hmm. As after a dropkick, Doug Williams rolls out of the ring, Petey joins him over the top with a beautiful, smooth Frankensteiner. So Volador and EY just enter. A much more serious Eric Young as he's able to take. Young deadlifts Volador. So impressive. 
and instead of powerbombing him, sits him on the top turnbuckle and taps his cheek. I do love this new confidence of EY, kind of slapping his face, you know, it was like, I got you, it was pretty great. Eric Young was a beast. He was so strong. You know, for years, JR used to always bang on like, uh, Billy Gunn, the pound for pound strongest man in WWE. I'm like, Eric Young honestly has to be one of the pound for pound most powerful guys. He's a beast. Yep. Would you not just get a dude who's like 150 pounds and he can lift twice as much as a 300 pounder would? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Bollocks. Did you see how EY bumped for Wibbly Volador? There was an arm drag and then he just bumps onto the mat and, and then jumps again out of the ring. <laughs> oh, I think he was just jealous of Bashir. From- <laughs> <laughs> Who was willing to take a top rope Hurricane Rana? Eh, Sanjay. Pinned. One, two, three. The match continues. Hit it one, two. Sanjay Gutt has been eliminated. Look the first one. Sanjay Dutt has been eliminated. Oh, we need nine falls in this bout. <laughs> Yeah, but did you notice, just like all elimination matches or multi-fall matches, the wrestler's HB is cut in half. You know, they. <laughs> I was thinking the same. I was like, oh, it's it's a 10-man elimination. Ah, it'd probably only take five minutes, though. So Scott Steiner was right. This is a video game match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually is, yeah. yeah. Oh, why is there nine falls? Because it determines the rankings. Tap the nose. Rock the world and Volador's out. Williams with a chaos theory, a bowl back over, roll up into a German suplex and pin. Spooge, it was perfect. Yep. It's so gorgeous. It's an absolutely incredible move. Chad Gable does it now. I'd even venture to say that Chad Gable does it even better because, like, he's. Ooh, I don't like that. You don't, you're not into like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> because he's such a powerful guy that he just deadlifts people and it just looks amazing. Yeah, I immediately rewound to watch this again. As we see Raven Williams and Williams with a quick roll up out of the corner, wow. right into that suplex. One, two, got it. Shh. Bia by EY. Hey! hey! RKO by Homicide. Ha <laughs> ha. Gringo cutter. And does a tope turn helo to the outside. Lands on his fucking back on the railing. Everyone gasps and the refs remove him from the match. This looked more like a work to me because Hernandez came out. I don't think he was actually injured, right? See, TNA's director, Keith Mitchell, decided, oh, let's show this spot from different camera angles. And it's like, this wasn't anywhere near as bad as it thought on the first go around. Yeah. No, he looks fine. Six left. Battle lines formed. Williams and Tanahashi versus Creed, PD, Machismo and EY. The Englishman and Japanese ganged up on four on two. (laughs) That's racist. (laughs) PD whipped to the ropes, telegraphs a back body drop by instead hitting a Canadian destroyer. One, two, three, and Creed's out. Oh, did you know? Tanahashi is technically in this boat. Here is a list of moves he's got. <laughs> Head jaw jacker to homicide. Kick to the tummy. Clothesline to PD. Much later, a sling blade. And follows up with a high fly flow, which eliminates PD. Which they didn't know the name of. Insiguri to EY, axe handle to Machismo, kick, <laughs> drop kick in the corner, somersault leg drop, and then get small packaged. His consolation prize is the number four seed. Inside cradle, small packet, Tanahashi's out. This match went 21 minutes, by the way. That's what he did. I assume this is it now for him, right? No, no, he, he's got he's got a few more of these world beaters. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. You have one of the greatest wrestlers in the world in 2008 and you have him in the background of a multi-man match where he fades. Do something with him. Him versus Dutt for 12 minutes and you will blow the roof off of this place. Hmm. Tanahashi has been eliminated. Three left. Machismo takes a big Rikishi bump. Blocks Doug's chaos theory, sunset flip, and aloha Doug. Not even a microsecond, and into an EY wheelbarrow toss up a neck breaker. Beast. Yeah. Can he do it? One, two, got him! That's Doug out, and it's down to two TNA frontline members, EY and Machismo. Nice show of respect, handshake there. Yeah. Bit awkward together, stuff like Machismo goes for a hip toss. But EY was looking for a suplex, few seconds of jostling while they figured out. 
maybe it's a two baby faces. They're not used to wrestling each other, you know. Big head of steam, but EY drops his head and books with a beautiful Northern Lights suplex. Bridges up. One, two, three, and that's it. EY is the number one X Division contender. Serious nature of Eric Young goes the success as that bridging pin. Did he get it? Here it is it. your winner, Showtime, Eric Young. Another great multi-man pay-per-view opener X Division match. They just do it every single month. I probably preferred the Steel Asylum match, but yeah, there was great. Everyone, or most of the lads here were, were fantastic. The one nagging issue I had, which I always have when anyone brings up rankings in any wrestling company, it's like, this is a brilliant idea and you'll do fucking nothing with it. <laughs> yeah. We'll never hear of this again. Yeah. yeah, like number three to number 10, get nothing. You're just back in the pool. Yeah. It's just the biggest loser and, <laughs> and the winner gets something. Like the X Division puts on incredible matches and that's a given at this stage. But they rarely have storylines surrounding these matches. Have a proper rankings system in the X Division at all times. Have it mean something and you could build your storylines around that. Should we get uh, Eric Bischoff in to do the <laughs> oh, rankings? Oh, you can get to do the uh, fan rankings, yeah? What's this now? Do you know, remember it was like 2010 and they were like, we're going to have the fans oh, tweet yeah. in, not tweet, we're going to text in and they're going to have rankings and they're going to matter. And they're gonna, you're going to get title shots based on who you want to get them. Yeah. And it's like every week, Desmond Wolf, number one. Next, yeah. next week, Desmond Wolf. Yeah. I think he won like three weeks in a row and then they were like, cut it, cut it, no. <laughs> and I was like, Eric maybe just maybe the fans are trying to tell you something mm. he's like no no already yeah uh abyss stevie richards come on come on uh dreamer dreamer get in here rhino rhino yeah yeah fucking hell uh yeah a cavalcade of courageous curtain jerkers fun but ultimately forgettable uh, again. I loved this match. <laughs> oh yeah, I loved it by the way. It was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I thought Dot he wasn't in it for very long, but just everything he does, he's so fast and he's so smooth and he can do things that nobody else can. Push push Dot. Free your mind. Tonight here at Turning Point and listen to this lineup that we have. At the commentary desk, the lads run down the card. Holy shit, they listened! The women, especially Roxy, they're all looking at the camera now. There we go. Amazing. Yeah, we've got influence. Yep. We've yeah. still got the influence. <laughs> Retrospective influence. Yeah. I love it. Foley and Jared backstage. It's apparently bring your kids to work day as Mick's son Mickey sleeps off a big day at Universal Studios, name dropping the Hulk roller coaster. Oh, which we went on. This is the one that goes like, Rawr! It's anyway. great, yeah. It's probably the best roller coaster in, in Orlando. And you can hear it from like anywhere in the park. Yeah. <laughs> because all you hear is Hulk going, Rawr! Yeah. Lauren is worried about tension between the main event mafia and the TNA originals. Jarrett says himself and Mick are going to unload some bullets before everyone starts shooting. You go take care of the kids. I'm going to face Kurt straight up. Will do. Good luck. Hey, hey, match number two. It's Raisha Saeed and Awesome Kong versus Roxy Leviux and Taylor Wilde. Raisha Saeed. <laughs> <laughs> On the go-home impact, Roxy is laid out backstage. How do you know she's injured? A single line of blood is wiped on her shoulder. Mm. <laughs> it does actually look quite rough, actually. Have a look. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good makeup job. Hmm. A, a, a bit freeze frame. Oh, see, tell me what you see. Um, there's a picture in the dumpster. Who is it? Mm-hmm. I was waiting to bring this up. Karen Angle. Someone has chucked Karen Angle set in the bin. <laughs> That's her giant portrait in the recycling yeah. bin. That was from her chat show, Karen's Angle. And as we brought up on the last review, Karen Angle is currently done in TNA and she's gone. And so they had a gimmick where ODB was rummaging through the bins backstage and and she was having a look at Karen's pictures. Uh, Yeah, because ODB is going to get her own chat show in two weeks time. It's Uh, garbage, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do you think Kurt was okay with this? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. He's probably like, hey, fuck <laughs> you. Bam. So, Roxy, uh, what's your story? Uh, born and raised up in Boston. Uh, it's where I hang out with all my friends and stuff. Uh, just like to go to the gym and <laughs> reading some comics. Hit up the movies when I can with some <laughs> hanging out. All right. It is Awesome Kong against everyone else. Voiceover guy, it is Awesome Kong versus everyone else. Now get ready for Kong teaming with her friend Raisha Saeed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to set used to off ragging on Roxy again. Jesus Christ. She's like gotten- <laughs> the Ford show in a row. Yeah, she's gotten some awful treatment. But this is a proper grudge match. Roxy's been laid out. And they've been fighting backstage. It's proper heat behind this match. And Roxy comes out beaming, you know, like, hey, she's pointing at the crowd, you know, she's having a great deal of time. Taylor, on the other hand, is basically wants to get down to business, which I respect, but... Respect. <laughs> yeah, Roxy, you know, somebody needs to take her under their wing, I think. Oh, do you like the Kong ate my sign sign? It's better than anything Lodi had, uh, you know. They're pretty bad looking teeth marks, to be fair. Do you like there's a little bit of blood on the ends there? He's kind of cleared the ends. Yeah, you like science. She has a uh, gingivitis. <laughs> <laughs> Kong and Raisha are accompanied by Rocka Kong, Rocka Kong. Say me, Rocka Kong, Rocka Kong, Rocka Kong, Rocka Kong. Versus baby faces outlast Roxy and Taylor, or as Raisha says, to a vanilla face. Oh my god. You're vanilla face. Yalla, yalla. Roxy with a crucifix pin. Nope. Sunset flip. Aloha. Aloha. No. <laughs> Kong so big she doesn't need an aloha iron. Goes for a giant whoopsie but misses and takes a Roxy crossbody. Which I thought looked really cool. It's a, it's a crossbody to someone sitting on their arse though. It, he couldn't get any less <laughs> impressive. <laughs> it's executed very well. Yes. yes. Yeah. It is harder to jump. Down, yes. if you get me, yeah. You know how women tennis players are, you know, quite loud with the grunts and exertions. Bort. Ain't got nothing on prisoner of war Raisha, who wails like she's being tortured <laughs> by an arm ringer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get out. <sighs> In a second. Incredible teamwork here. You talked about working together. Exactly what we've seen from Roxy and Taylor Wilde. I would say four or five tags already here in the opening minute. Don West is like, don't underestimate Raisha. You'll be surprised. Just as Raisha can't take a top rope arm drag, Taylor holds the rope, goes to the ground, stop, and does a standing arm drag from the mat. This is actually a thing. They tried this spot on the Go Home Impact and Raisha was so slow to flip over from the arm drag, her arm twists and she almost lands on it. Oh, wow. Breaking her arm. like Almost broke her elbow. Anyway, Saeed escapes wrestling more by tagging in Kong. Look at Kong pulling back on that chin. Sneering, snarling and menacing. The kaiju gets some heat so everyone can see how nice her new silver and red accents are on her black battle armor outfit. Small note, but Kong also has gold dread extensions, and she's the champion. She's wearing gold. I love that little accoutrement. Uh, if you notice, I used to do that in Dubby Dub. Whenever I was champion, I had uh, gold wrist tape. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you mean, when, what do you mean, whenever I was champion? You were always champion. <laughs> <laughs> Politicking with <laughs> Raisha right, Raisha pulls up Roxy with a surfboard and stomps to the back. Oh, no back rake! Where the claw strikes. <laughs> that was her big thing. It was the one good thing she had. She's not a bad wrestler, but then you put her in this gear and maybe it just completely messes with her game or she can't see properly. But yeah, she was having a really, really tough time out there. Because she's character first, wrestler second. Yeah. I thought she did fine, but I, like, I always find it amusing that you have managers for wrestlers and nine times out of ten, that manager is also a wrestler. And the manager then ends up wrestling, but they wrestle competently, but they shouldn't because they're supposed to be a manager. I mean, say what you want about Raisha Saeed here, but she looks like a wrestler. Maybe not having a great match, but she moves like a wrestler. Umaga's manager, Armando Estrada. Alejandro, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, he was fucking ripped. That was crazy. Yeah, like, 
it, it shouldn't be that way. Like Bobby Heenan was the perfect example of a manager who used to be a wrestler who didn't work like a wrestler. He worked yes. like a manager. Oh, very good. Come on, Bobby, outsmart him. Oh, 360 and out of there. Kaiju Kong finds out why Brett's rope is the most dangerous rope as she misses a big splash. Beautiful form on her, though. Look, have a looky. Roxy, look out! Oh! Time for the finish. Rock has two spots in the bout. One, square up to Taylor and go... <laughs> <laughs> and two, get clobbered off the apron. All four women in. Taylor and Raisha mid-ring collision, leaving Kong and Roxy up. Pretty funny. Roxy shits herself. Kong charges at her and is low-bridged out. Roxy follows up with a splash to the outside, so Kong is down, making Raisha easy pickings for Taylor. German suplex crashes Raisha's shoulders to the mat. One, two, three, and the baby faces win. The chance for Saeed. Here's that bridge. Two. She got it. Taylor, you can celebrate for 39 seconds <laughs> before we go to the back. To the back. Uh, what do you think? I thought it was quite good. I thought everyone pulled their weight. It's all about Kong and Taylor, but neither had time, I suppose, to show what they normally do. It was absolutely fine, but unfortunately it meant fucking nothing. Well, so what if Taylor Wilde and Roxy beat Kong and Saeed in a tag team match? Who gives a shit? I want to see Taylor have a rematch with Kong, please. That's literally what I asked for last month. But Steve, yeah, I'm with you. I actually thought this match was good. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Even Roxy looked good. So yeah. uh, thumbs up to her. Hey, oh, both our fans are going to be ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to say Taylor Wilde has great kicks. The like way that she turns her body, she makes it look vicious. It's like a footballer, like a free kick. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, grand eight minutes, serviceable, nothing special. It's like, I like Taylor. I really like Kong. I understand we can't have Taylor versus Kong every month. But this match is to fill time until Taylor Kong, <laughs> which we won't get. Next month, they have a new number one contender for the Knockouts Championship, Christy Hemi. Yeah. Are you saying we don't get a Taylor Kong rematch? Yeah, they've moved off it. They don't get another singles match. This is it. They're, they're done with that. The last time they do wrestle is January 4th, 2010. Oh, the big one. <gasps> oh! <laughs> where it's Kong and Wilde they're tagging with Samada and Sarita this is when TNA had the women's mm. tags belts yeah. and the heels that's, that's win them that's 14 months away she just lost her belt last month and she hasn't had a rematch no. oh, what is, I'm really disappointed I really wanted to see that uh, poor old Taylor shufty down the card please feud with Raka Khan Saeed and oh see who is the fourth member of the Contrage it's going to be Sojo Bo. It's Sojo Bo. The Sojo Bo. Bo. You the always Bo. lying to your friends. Bo. You ain't my mama. You ain't my mama. <laughs> Never get nothing in the end. <laughs> <laughs> did you find, did you find the you ain't my mama? I did. I, nice. I had to go through about seven months of impact to, to, to <laughs> I love it. I, I'm find happier it. for it. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Nobody tells me what to do. Unless you're my mama. And you're not my mama. Not the mama! Our boy JB's backstage in lovely dark brown wood and velvety carpeted locker room of the main event mafia. Jared asks for the mafia to not let this get out of hand. Kurt is furious, quickly antagonizing Jared to live in reality. Face me in the ring. Big Kev interjects, break it up, break it up, and Kurt storms off. Jeff pleads that this company is his baby, it's his future. Nash calmly retorts. Your future? Yeah. Then you better look at this, because this is your future. Ladies and gentlemen, no surrender continues. Oh my God. It's a grudge match. The X Division champion, Sheik Abdul-Bashir versus Rhino. Hey, Ozzy, what do you get if you cross an elephant and a rhino? Go on. Elephino. <laughs> Ella if. Yeah, I know. Rhino. I know. Elephino. <laughs> yes! uh, that was Pepe the King Prawn Muppet. He's my favorite Muppet. Okay, which one? I don't remember. Um, there was like Seymour and Pepe. They were like mm. a comedy duo, a fat elephant and a king prawn. And they just throw out jokes and no one laughs. 
And it was just the best. Like, just like we did there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if I know. And if I know. Gee, Pepe, I don't think they get it. Steve, I had to go and find that sit down Bashir promo where he makes a lot of sense. It's really good. It, in my eyes, turned him babyface. It's on the Go Home Impact. Uh, it looks to be taped in a like a movie screening room. Yeah. Very nice. So Bashir defends his position, saying, I've been mistreated and ostracized since 9-11, based on the way I look and on the way I dress. It's been a long seven years of bubbling frustration. Uh, fair enough, okay. By the way, I love America and working here. I can't stand the people. I love that. I just can't stand the general public. <laughs> <laughs> He dodges, deflects, and twists to Nay's words. And Bashir, before he starts shouting in dirty foreigner to end the segment, he says he lost his wife and family in 9 11. Which is a, just a bold like, faced lie. That is, you can't say that. She lost them where? Like, did, did he, like, go down the wrong island Tesco or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he found them 20 minutes yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you like at the end? He's going like, and he's like screaming foreigner at him. And then Mike turns around and goes, Speak English. <laughs> <laughs> ten on ten. Unbelievable. Airplane crashless entrance as Bashir is out first like a big job guy. At least he doesn't job or jog to the ring. TNA shamelessly wheel out an American army guy to do the ring announcing. Last month we had Sergeant Cassara introducing Creed. This time Sergeant Autry, local Florida veteran. The opponent in this match hails from Detroit, Michigan. The War Machine Rhino! Rhino with an I. He is a poor choice for pro America. He's a snarling beast, a smash mouth clubbing brawler. He doesn't have patriotic fervor, you know? Immediate no attention in this bout. All the crowd are looking left and not at the match in the ring. What is going on? Oh shit, ICP have shown up. We get a little chant from the crowd, just in case you didn't get it. Who's that with them? Holy. Scott Hall. Oh my God. There are five people with JWOTs in the front row. Yeah. So we got Scott Hall, Violent J and Shaggy T Dup with Two Tough Tony and Corporal Robinson. Congrats. You've successfully diverted attention away from the in-ring as you are constantly watching to see what the juggalos do and when they'll get involved. So Bashir goes to the outside and tells Hal to suck it. And he pushes your man on the right. Commentators allude to, but never specifically mention Hall by name, saying there's familiar faces in the crowd. Yeah, he's finally showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That would have been a great one, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, what do you mean you're not into this match? Headlock, rest hold, and Bashir bellows. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> Died. <laughs> Back and forth, neither taking control. No spots busy work until the finish. What is the finish? Rhino Spinebusters looks out into the crowd, signaling he's gonna go for the gore. He perches honkers down in the corner, runs, kick to the face. Effective deterrent. Somebody jot that down. Bashir gets in Sewell's face. Hawk, paw. Distraction means he eats a gore. Gore! Gore! One, two, three, and Rhino wins! Here is your winner, the War Machine, Rhino! In nine minutes, is Rhino the X Division champion? No, it was just a grudge match. Rhino is not an X Division wrestler, he's a bimbo. <laughs> uh, did, did, sorry, did you notice Rhino didn't celebrate here basically he just walked off <laughs> like, oh, he, he was pissed oh it was the ICP yeah they never uh, told him about it he yeah. found out about it live trying yeah. to wrestle you can imagine him going backstage these fuckers taking my heat yeah. and then it's somebody what? like he's never had any heat <laughs> get out <laughs> this match did not have heat yeah. this match wasn't good though yeah. like uh, like this was an unwinnable situation yeah everyone's attention is diverted away from you so you were just doing busy work and you, uh, that's it I'm done I'm out of here this is a television feud that had no business being on pay-per-view yeah 
Rhino with his celebration is like he doesn't celebrate good because he only got 26 seconds <laughs> before he got away. <laughs> it's less than Taylor Wilde got. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, when I saw this, I was like, wait, ICP had no influence on the outcome. They weren't mentioned my name. Was this a shoot? Did you legit crash the pay-per-view? This is a work shoot at the same time. It was a work shoot as in TNA planned it but didn't tell most of the roster. Rhino didn't know. He was furious. Oh, don't work over the boys. That's never a good idea. Yeah. ICP invading is probably trying to recapture the glory of Road Dog invading WWE. <laughs> the glory of parking <laughs> can, lot. Can we, uh, <laughs> can we just do the, you know what I want. You know what? Hit the bottle. noon. Alamo. Thank you Wednesday. very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fans did show up on the Wednesday and... They weren't there. They shot that on the Saturday. No way. <laughs> and so they didn't I go to the thing. Uh, invading WWE's parking lot, Cookie Gate, 2004. Do you remember this? Shane Douglas on the mic, Abyss with balloons, Tracy with cookies. WWE were in Universal Studios as well, filming a West Side Story style commercial for the 2005 Royal Rumble. TNA sent a few lads down to say hello. They filmed it and aired it on Impact, despite WWE saying, we'll sue you for it. <laughs> because they blurred the faces. I was like, oh, you can't sue us because we don't have any money to give you. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, in there. Play that tape. Play Cookie Gate right now. <laughs> I love how he's already gimmicked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're here at Universal Studios, home of TNA Wrestling, the epicenter of wrestling, and we're here to welcome our good friends Trace. from the WWE World Tracy. Wrestling. <laughs> no pun intended. Actually, the best I've ever seen. Her. Yeah, welcome yeah, yeah. Here because word has it they're here to check out what a professional wrestling program looks like. So, wait, is Vince around? No, sir. He's a friend of mine, oh, man. He, re- he might not remember me. I made him a bunch of money. I want to get a plate. I just want to get some mahi mahi, man. How you doing? That's too much to pay right there, bro. That is too much to pay. Is that right, right? We got you a balloon, yeah. homie. We come in peace, represent, you know, old town, old town. He's he <laughs> having great, Greg. I'm here to talk to Vince McMahon, and Vince, if you're here listening, please come on out and talk. I'd like to talk to you about a few things from the past. But like you said, some t- he is a stand-up guy, but sometimes he has to sit down to aim. But here we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, 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 that's quite good. That's quite good. Don't come in our backyard and cook your mahi-mahi. And if you do, we will take your food. <laughs> I wish he'd stop saying mahi-mahi. What is mahi-mahi? I think it's a vegetable. Oh, it's a fish. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, vegetable of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the saves. Steve. There you go. Uh, yeah, you like that? Uh, it's it's embarrassing. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah. I think it would have been better if, you know, uh, when they saw them coming up, they all just went inside and, like, closed the door, and then you can hear it being locked, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the best thing of all is that Ryan Killings just went up and stole their mahi mahi. <laughs> It said it free, free mahi mahi, free mahi mahi, if you will. Lauren is outside the TNA Originals locker room where Foley is trying to parlay for cooler heads and for the lads to meet the mafia halfway. Shelley dismisses Foley but says, uh, just have a bit of crack, just a bit of grab assing. Just joking around, a little grab ass and a little time yeah. foolery. Okay. Machine guns are bratty heels, but the main takeaway here is that Lauren's mic is just for show. She's holding the mic up to Alex, but you can't hear him because there's a boom mic in the locker room, which is not beside anyone. <laughs> okay, so you're part owner now. You invested your money. You want to help us out? Why don't you take your dumpy ass back to your desk, push your pencil... What the hell? Hey, 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 Match number four is for the TNA Tag Team Championships. It's the Motor City Machine Guns versus Beer Money Incorporated, the champions. The Guns versus Beer Money, holy shit! 
I say that because in 2010, the guns and beer money had a historic best of five series where these lads were firing on all cylinders and everyone lost their shit. But this is not their first bout. This is actually their fourth time wrestling each other. Wow. The guns won the first, June 24th, 2008 Impact. Beer money won the next two, the heels winning the tag championships at Hard Justice in August. And now match number four is for the titles. But the rest of the matches were on impact and like four minutes long, you know. This is the first time on pay-per-view. Tale of the tape. TNA branded as taglines. Very clever. TNA admits Morgan and Abyss are the number one contenders, so they should be getting a title shot sometime. But I, I can't complain as this is the bout I'd rather see. Oh, when did the Monsters win it? The go-home impact. I mean, look at this tag team division that we have here in TNA. Not to even think about beer money against the guns for the titles here this Sunday at Turning Point. How can you technically have Tanahashi on TV but not bury him in an eight-man schmoz tag? Hooray! Tanahashi with Volador versus Abyss and Morgan versus Team 3D versus LAX. Tanahashi sells for homicide, eats a neckbreaker. Tanahashi sells on the outside, hiding like a coward. <laughs> sling blade to Bully Ray, Ooh. sling blade to Devon. Ooh. Ah, balls, eat a 3D, everybody bundled out, and Sneaky Abyss grabs the contract for the win. Ah, okay. Mm. More Tanahashi updates. We are just, like, covering every move he does in TNA. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of multi-man tag team ladder matches, you know, you think of the big, epic WWE main event level matches that are legendary. TNA is like, I'll give you four minutes on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your damn luck. Beer! Money! money. Oh, steal no beer money theme. Yeah, they're just coming out to Roots theme still. Well, with a... Sorry about your damn, damn luck. luck. Yeah. Uh, when do they get it? The first pay-per-view they have with it, you've got to wait until Hard Justice in August next year. Whoa! But they do have the awesome Beer Money shirt. Yeah, one of your favourites. Yeah, did we all have this? Yeah, we, I, we did. I, I can't find mine. I still have mine at home. Hmm. Uh, yeah, mine's inside somewhere, actually, yeah. ICP are still here. Fuck off. <laughs> You can ruin Martin Bashir's bout, <laughs> but not Guns Beer Money. Like, make them leave. All right, just get off the hard camera. You know, you can still be around, but I don't want to look at you. Do you know? Ding, ding, ding. Sabin shoulder blocks Storm, who scooches to the open arms of Rude in the corner. I love that gimmick so much. It's so great. It's because his head is very near his crotch. Dangerously. A little close to the knob, and the guns are like... Eh. The bit of come see, come see, come see. Come <laughs> Crucifix pin isn't successful, so kick, double bird, and spinning back kick. I love how Stone Cold's middle finger, it's very angry, anti-authoritarian, and when the guns do it, it's like... <laughs> it's like danger. bratty. Yeah. 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 Double springboard splashes to the outside, and Shelly blows a kiss to the camera. Inverted atomic drop to Rude, baseball slide knocking him to the mat. Float over, hold, wrenching his head up so Shelly can big head of steam, missile dropkick. Storm wants in. Double kick. Double sole to the back of the knee down. Simultaneous kicks. Spooge. I'm watching this, I'm just flipping my shit. So fluid, so fast, so smooth. First person to say this, but Motor City Machine Guns are my favourite tag team. Really? Just throwing it out there, you know? Yeah, what do you think, Steve? I, I'm generally shocked. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> Don West is equally impressed, marvelling at the rapid fire shots. Like a machine gun. Tanae tells us despite being 2007 TNA Tag Team of the Year, the guns have never held the belts. And I was just like, I love listening to the commentary. They're musing on the bout, saying they expect a lot of fast, high-risk offence from the guns, but didn't expect it to be so successful so quickly. So they're paying attention and they're giving you their thoughts on it as it happens. It's like a real bout, do you know? The guns wrestle a perfect match until Storm can blindside tag in, who delivers a big lariato and heels take control. Beer Money's version of the guns' offense is a big slam, then elbow drop and elbow drop. <laughs> Storm cuts off a hot tag to Sabin and gives us a karate kid. Marked out to that. Brain kick. Marked stats. out. 
Beer. Money. Money. Suplex and Scott Hall marks out. Referee Rudy Charles misses the legit tank to Rude, so Rude claps at the ref as he gets in to let him know, eh, it's all about board here. <laughs> <laughs> it comes into play immediately as Storm distracts the ref, so he misses Saban's hot tag, and the 160-pound ref muscles him back out. He didn't hear the tag, he swears! Unbelievable! Shelley stops Rude with a big kick, escapes the grass with a back elbow, duck the punch, which hits Storm. Negotiate Rude into a front face lock on the left. Storm in a like a rock bottom Uranagi position on the right. Plants both down to the mat. One man tag team offense. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and finally gets a hot tag to Sabin. Four to heels. Tap to temple. Double tree of woe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> High low kick. And an outside in swinging DDT. Storm is on the top turnbuckle. Throw Rude into his crutch. It's kind of into his knees, really. Brett's rope Frankensteiner and perfect Shelly Frog Splash. One, two, no! Ah, bollocks, that was it, lads. You should have got that. Shelly in a tree of whoa. 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 <laughs> Rude goes to the top, which he would never normally do. Let's see why. A Tower of Doom. Sabin's going to suplex Rude as Storm wants to powerbomb Sabin. Shelly hooks Storm's chest from upside down and they all avalanche down and the crowd flip out. Big time tower suplex. Oh, I'll tell you what though, Robert Rude got the brunt of it. He got the brunt of it as you saw his back go up, but all of them now are down. Everything in this match is great. Like I'm just listening to you call this and I'm getting to literally watch this match for the second time in my brain. And it's still great. What a compliment you just got there, Jay. Mm, I'll, I'll put that in the pocket. <laughs> you should do <laughs> audio versions of wrestling pay-per-views. Some kind of commentary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Finish of the match. Kick, kick, insiguri. But Rudy Charles pesters Shelley to get out. So Beer Money's manager, Jacqueline, comes in for her spot. Uh, uh, no DQ. Takes a scoop slam. Ref ushers her out. Beer spit by Storm. DWI drinking while investing, aka a double team neck drop powerbomb. One, two, three, and after 17 minutes, beer money retain. Into the powerbomb and the pin and the three count. Jeez, what'd you think? What'd you think? I obviously don't like this match as much as you two clearly like this match. I really like this match. I don't love this match. So you love this, but you weren't in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Beer Money are a great tag team. They're slick. They work beautifully well together. They're great on the mic. I just don't get excited about them like I do with the guns. And I think I noticed it more in this match because I love the guns so much, as you may not have known. But <laughs> <laughs> I think Beer Money are so good, but... I didn't turn on this match thinking this is going to be great. I turned on going, yeah, the guns are going to run around, do some crazy, amazing stuff and beer money are going to do what beer money do. And it's always good. But yes, really good match. But I'm sure you have higher opinions than I do. I know what you mean here, because the guns are incredible. Beer money are very good here, but they would get even better. They would get great and they would get excellent. Okay. But that's, you know, a year down the line, two years down the line when they're They've been tagging much longer, you know. Also, I think they worked better when they weren't heels. Certain times, the fact that they have to get heat takes away from the pops that they can get from like doing cooler moves and better spots, which actually brings me to this match. So beer money are heels. The guns are heels. This is a heel-heel match, but I'm sure it's just going to be full of the guns doing incredible spots that are going to make me pop and I'm going to want them to win. And so that may actually hurt my viewing of the match because I'm not supposed to want them to win because I'm supposed to want them to lose. But I'm also not supposed to want <laughs> beer money to win yeah. because they're also heels. Yeah. But like, fuck it. Who cares? The match was awesome. Saban and Shelley are incredible. They're so slick. They're so smooth. They're, I, don't, I don't know if you know. <laughs> Go on, what is it? No. <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, what? It, they're probably my favorite tag team. Why what have you know? never said this before? I've known you I for, know. I don't know, what is it, 20 years? Yeah, Come on, Steve. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fucking great. Like, just, there's so many moves to mark out it, and I loved it, and I would love to see more. Just, hmm. If you wanted 
beer money to get better kind of heel heat. They should have just done a headlock and just go. Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Rocket him. Um, and it's a halfway point of the show. Because oh, I can have is like a main event mafia. Maybe it's going to be great. So let's take it to the. <laughs> He's off. He doesn't have a notes. Oh, like, he throat. always has that written down. You need, the, you need the, <laughs> the Dexter Jetster. <laughs> <laughs> Boss Nass, episode one. He's uh, leader of the Gungans. Yeah, not Dexter doesn't do that, no, does he? No, he doesn't. Uh, it's a Camino Stable. <laughs> <laughs> we start being friends. With zero sugar and zero calories, I don't worry about a crash. And the powerful, great-tasting energy gives me what I need to help me make an impact. Stacker 2. Six-hour power extreme energy shot. Energy with an edge. And we're back. Match number five is a Legends Championship bout. The Instant Classic, Christian Cage versus Booker T, the champion. King of the Jungle, Booker T interview, brandishing his new Legends Championship, which symbolizes the respect, Respect. honor, and dignity. Respect, Respect. honor, dignity, and class of the main event mafia. Booker, however, is saving his voice tonight. Charmel is on interview duty and says it represents Booker as the legend that he is. And tonight, Christian will be welcomed as a new member of the main event mafia. Because it's title for faction slot. <laughs> <laughs> Booker T's Legends Championship versus Christian joining the MEM. Nice. So the first of four mafia matchups. Where's your crown, King Booker? Me meow meow, me meow meow, me meow me meow me meow me meow. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lovely new black robe too. Giant gold kind of epaulets. The ornamental shoulder dealies. Amazing looking. Booker T's character work during this time was out of this world. He was so entertaining, so fun, looks like a megastar, incredible presence. His accent, his like wife by his side looks amazing. Just the entire package, top class. I think this is the best work outside of the ring he's ever done. Yes. Ever done. Mm. I don't necessarily agree with you that he's phoning it in in the ring either. I think he might not be peak Booker but he's also what well into his 40s at this stage so you know honestly might have been harsh in saying phoning it in but he either didn't or wasn't capable of working to the level of the in ring in TNA I think as he did late 90s early 2000s yeah Christian Cage wins this matchup he holds the most impressive championship belt I've ever seen look at that face it really is impressive Thank God Scott Hall and co. have gone. Who is in the crowd? Move over, rally towel guy. King brother is in town. (laughs) (laughs) He's looking good. He's got it all going on. It's great. Rocking a crown, royal red cape, white TNAT and a black backpack. Wasn't it nice? I mean, obviously it was never going to be ECW standard of crowd crazy shit, but there's so many characters in the crowd yeah. just having a great time. And yeah. it is shit that they don't go on the road and they're stuck in this building. But like, at least you get these regulars that come in and know their shit and enjoy it. And they love it. And they yeah. want it to be good. Not like the kind of modern jaded smart who will sit there and be like, Oh, you uh, uh, botched that, you yeah, know? Exactly. Oh, Matthew is going to know about this spot, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I will say I love the fans showing back up and I love the regulars, but if you go to a second show, bring a new sign because there's a guy with a main event mafia equals respect <laughs> sign and he just brings it to impact afterwards. Uh, That's just lazy. I mean, mm. it, it doesn't, it's not expensive to make a, a new sign. Mm. Book 
with an Arn Anderson spinebuster, but doesn't turn, pivot, and slam. He stops Christian mid-run and splats him back down in front of him. So it's kind of like the rock spinebuster, but yeah. much better. It's all Booker T as he stomps on Cage on the outside, then a wheelbarrow launching him into the ring post. Christian tries an unprettier way too early in the bout, rebuffed, a similar fate to trying a Texas Cloverleaf. Can't even start to turn him before he's bucked off. Superplex. Skycam catches Christian. He's like... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the refs count. <laughs> so he can kick out a two. Yeah. But the commentators cover up by saying that the eyes were rolling in the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> TNA commentary team were amazing at covering up little things like that. They were so good. Booker may be getting ready for a little spin rooney action. Well, he, he just feels it. It's, it's, it's what motivates him. Unearned spin <laughs> Oh, okay. It's very odd. Because Christian was almost back to his feet, so he had to go back down to his knee to let Booker do it. Christian motions to do one too, but Booker puts a stop to it. Successful Texas Cloverleaf. But Booker T, he's such a hoss. Big tree trunk legs. Christian's able to apply it perfectly. Well done. Has Booker T got the in in terms of uh, body ratio? Body rate, the longest legs in the history of wrestling. <laughs> Do his legs go all the way up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, for a male, for yeah. a male, his legs yeah, go on forever. Fantastic. His hair. <laughs> Tall he drink was, of water. He's like. got. A, <laughs> <laughs> I go, he's got legs. <laughs> Uh, Charmel on the apron Booker almost wallops her Christian tries the unprettier And is thwarted Schoolboy Reversed Hold the tights And One, two, three Booker T wins it In 11 minutes Got it I thought the match was good I didn't think they did anything particularly memorable Or amazing But just good Solid Pro wrestling Decent heat by the fans the finish was, you know, like the heels didn't go over clean because they don't want to go over the baby faces. But it's like, this is the one time in a baby faces career that you you can just beat Christian clean. It's fine. He's fucking leaving, you know. But yeah, solid. Grant. I think we're agreeing. As the years go by, we're agreeing more and more. I thought the word, yeah, solid. I mean, it's two very good wrestlers go out and have a very solid match. There's no real heat in this feud. It's a silly feud. So you're just going to have a good impact main event match here, basically. It was it went exactly as expected. What can you say? Like, it was the most wrestling matchy wrestling match I've ever seen. It, it was a wrestling match. It was, and it was really, it was just good, solid. You know, you can't fault anything about this match. Okay, uh, I got four points for you. Ooh. One is that I completely agree with you guys in that, besides your analysis there, but it's the match stipulation makes no sense and is stupid. You should have to earn your spot in a prestigious group. The year's storyline is built around this team, not as a punishment for it. As a booby prize. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Y- you should, like, if you're going to lose the match, you should have to bottle them for a month, you know? <laughs> Make a roast, you know, (laughs) mow the lawn in your wife's Sunday dress. (laughs) Do you know? Court them. (laughs) (laughs) Please. (laughs) Number two, it was hard hitting, but unfortunately not a patch on last month. They couldn't really kick into kind of slick free flow. They're both very talented, but it's quite fumbly, you know, like Booker T tries for a full Nelson. Christian may be an unprettier, but it's just awkward jostling. Ends up just, you know, pulling the back of Booker's head down to the mat. I would like to see them wrestle a few more times. Like if Christian was staying, like the blow off match to have his freedom would be much better. Two last things. Book, man, don't do the spin a Rooney. You're a bad guy. That'll pop the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> but he's still smart. To win, Booker grabbed Christian's nappy. of course he'd win it's his weak spot (laughs) if this was a game Christian's nappy would be bright red and flashing you know (laughs) and you'd shoot it (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) he explodes yeah Tonight, Abyss, your chance to get some revenge on Kurt Angle for what he did to you and your partner Matt Morgan a few weeks back on Impact Lauren gets an update from the don't watch them on don't watch them. Monsters. Abyss 
And Matt Morgan. Abyss says Lauren looks very pretty tonight, but his mind is on Kurt Angle. Because he requested a false Count Anywhere matchup, so there's nowhere for Angle to hide. He pauses a few times to apologise for shouting as he's smitten with Lauren. Will this budding romance be reciprocated? Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this the promo where he talks about puss for, you know, three, yeah. four minutes? My puss! To finish, Matt says, <laughs> because none of the mics work. Yeah, it's terrible. It's way worse than normal. Here, I'll, I'll level it so you can hear it there. Actually, I'll give you both. I'll give yeah, you yeah. Uh, TNAs and then the Sweden. There you go. That was like Morgan's best ever promo. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Those six words. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Matt, any comment? Best of you be out there tonight instead of Abyss. That should be me out there. Best of you be out there tonight instead of Abyss. That should be me out there. It's a Falls Count Anywhere matchup. It's Kurt Angle versus the Monster Abyss. Storyline of the bout is this is busy work for Angle until he can face Jeff at Genesis. Mm -hmm. Since it's Jeff's company, Angle decided he's going to go on a tear until Jeff agrees, batter the locker room, which included almost breaking Matt Morgan's ankle. So Abyss ran in for the save. Now you've got me to deal with. Mm. I'm, I'm okay with it, but they've already wrestled. Yeah, but nothing was settled. Mm. I know, but they shouldn't have wrestled at all. This would have yeah. been much more, the build-up of anticipation would be much better. I agree. Kurt immediately hoofs to the outside to... Oh, re what, what? WrestleMania 27. They haven't locked up yet. He, like, okay. he immediately... Okay, we'll come yeah. back. We'll come back to that, because okay. I have a, a point to make about WrestleMania 27. <laughs> oh, I, I just jut in whenever it's... Yeah, 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 I will. Match hasn't even started yet. Kurt immediately hoofs to the outside to reassess, slaps his face, trying to psych himself up for such an assault, what will be a physical matchup against a gargantuan, barbaric wrestler. Great touch. Kurt charges straight into him. Clothesline. Beat down. Shock treatment. Thank God Kurt kicks out before three. Whew. Turn that back. Uh, two. Oh, I thought it was over. I love that opening. I was like, oh my fucking God. Okay. Ooh. And it's okay to kick out of a finisher that early in the match because Absolutely. you're fresh. It's okay. Yeah. At that point, it's just a move. Yeah. Crowd are rabid for this bout. Constant cheering, hooting, hollering. So the wrestlers come out to greet them. Right. So, WrestleMania 27 special. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H Undertaker. Instant brawl to the outside. But I obviously bring this up tongue in cheek all the time. But it got me thinking. What? And I, you know, I, I would love to hear from our great fans because I love them so much. What? The way that doesn't sound disingenuous. <laughs> <laughs> what are the most over mentioned matches in OSW? So I know that's one King of the Road. King of the Road oh, is another one. Sorry. Yes. Meanwhile. You're right. Benoit You've got Angle. Benoit Angle Backlash 2001. Brock Test. Brock Test. Yeah. Semi final of King of the Ring 2002. Yeah. Am I missing any? So that's Brock just. Brock Goldberg, WrestleMania 33. Oh, yeah. I don't think we mentioned. We've certainly mentioned it several times. But, but we, like, we, haven't we haven't talked about it. Yeah, okay. Featured into the fucking ground. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, but I'd love to hear from the lovely, lovely, wonderful fans. And Abyss has all of his allies and the fans out here as well, Don. And he goes right up the steps. Yanks Angle down and goes right back to the offense. Look at these shots to the head. Brawling in the bleachers. Shout out Kurt Selling when getting a blow to the head. He's like, Ugh! and he crosses his eyes. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. You just see like, you know, fucking stars you know, <laughs> around the top. Oh, uh, the birds. The birdies. <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah. <laughs> Wide shot of the fans. And there's a guy with a towel. Yeah, is it? Not rally towel guy. It's a different guy and a different towel. Gimmick infringement, lads. <laughs> Uh, they walk all around the bleachers, but it's the impact zone, so it doesn't take that long. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a good point. If you're ever going to have a brawl to the outside, this is the venue to do it, because 
Either they're going to be brawling beside you or you're going to see them very closely. Normally, I don't enjoy brawls around the crowd, but it finally works somewhere. Because it's so intimate. Yeah. The crowd do not let up. They're at fever pitch, losing their mind. It's even more impressive that this is booked the other way round. The heel smaller guy versus the baby face powerful giant. Chair shot by Kurt. And the cameraman catches Abyss doing a Bubba Ray hitch up the <laughs> Yeah, he does. In glorious HD. <laughs> Kurt Angle's at the top of the stage, belts it towards Abyss, and does a freaking somersault crashing onto Abyss. Executed perfectly. Unbelievable. And he's got Abyss. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Oh my God. Don West loses his mind. Iconic TNA spot. First of all, beautiful form, landed perfectly, Abyss caught him, there was no danger, it was perfection. Yep. Last month at Bound for Glory, we covered the famous Joe Bump that we said is probably TNA's most famous spot. I think this is up there for one of their most famous I spots. I forgot all about it. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. I think Joe Bump, Elix Skipper on the cage. Oh yeah. But I don't remember this at all, but I'm glad I didn't remember it because I loved watching it again. When you were watching this, what was your reaction when you were watching this? Holy fucking shit, what a nutter. And I'm so glad it was perfect. And he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know this man who's famously broken down? Yeah. His body can barely go anymore. There was talks of him that backstage he was a physical wreck. Like he couldn't tie his laces. He could barely get changed into his gear. And then he walked through that curtain and he was the best the business has ever had. Mm. Every single time. Kurt's got to be thinking, what on earth do I got to do? Chokeslam Kurt on the concrete. Whoa, whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Abyss regroups near the stage and Kurt charges at him and through the wall. Angle get his confidence back. Oh my God, they just busted through the wall. I say wall, but we're in HD now and it's... Cardboard. uh, The foam padding. (laughs) Yeah. We lose sight of both for a minute as the crowd get antsy. They're actually backstage, probably getting some water or whatever. Wonderful shot, as we're looking at the commentators, they're like, calm down, sure, we'll find them, don't worry. And Kurt is thrown through the wall on the other side, out to us. It's brilliant. It's Kurt Angle! Just got busted through this side of the wall! It was a perfect shot as well, because it, it just comes crashing out. And it, I loved him sliding along the ground, it was funny, but, you know, production value is not something you'd associate with TNA, but this is great production, mm. th- this shot. It was done perfectly. Oh, uh, just Abyss, he rips off the front of the hoarding, showing us that it's it's cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just, I watched this, it's like, why do I feel Kurt asked for this match so he could do these crazy stunts? Like, it's a million miles away from his incredible mat wrestling, but he's just as explosive doing this. Let's get into the ring and finish this. Reversal and angle slam. Abyss is way too fresh to be downed. Angle grabs a chair and runs at Abyss, who punches the chair back into his face. Awesome spot. Fred is big man. Oh, he just punched the chair right back into the face of the Olympic gold medalist. Ah, I flipped out. The monster isn't afraid of pain and will gladly inflict some on himself if it meant more on his opponent. That's what wrestling should be. You know when like people talk about, oh, he's going to the harbor, it's a high-risk maneuver. It's like, that's not what you should be getting over, that it's risky. I think you should be getting over that this guy is willing to go through a bit of pain to put a lot of pain on the guy that he's wrestling. Mm. Okay, very good. Well, I'm going to take a chance. My God! Oh, but he's able to block. Oh, how about that shot? Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> By a face. Throws Kurt into the chair. That's kind of propped up between two turnbuckles. Choke slam. One, two. No. Oh, how was that not the finish? Abyss also finds out why Brett's rope is the most dangerous rope. Missing a splash. Whack with a chair. Angle moonsault onto the chair. Hits it. Abyss with a tombstone? No. Abyss with a black hole slam? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't topple the Olympic hero. Kurt hightails it to Hector Guerrero. Get out of the fucking way. <laughs> um, just by the way, like uh, Hector Guerrero, I can't look at him without seeing this is what Eddie would look like 
if he's he was still around. Yeah. The ringer for yeah. him. It's uncanny, isn't it? He's even got the kind of homes. <laughs> <laughs> there was a shoulder shimmy you didn't see there. <laughs> they work their way up to the scaffolding platform. Kurt escapes the monster's grasp and forearm, big European uppercut, sends Abyss crashing down through the announce desk. Turns him around and gets that uppercut and smashes Abyss right through the Spanish announce table. Kurt scrambles down to pin. One, two, three. And Kurt Angle is the winner. Two. Got it. Your winner, Kurt Angle. Brilliant match. The crowd were fucking mental, which helped, but the wrestlers fed the crowd. Commentators were fucking mental. Brawling around. The arena worked. But it didn't go on too long and they had some nice spots to break up the, you know, punchy, kicky stuff that you always see. They went back into the ring. That was nice. They didn't need to, but they did to give everyone a nice view of what's going on and just kind of reset almost. A few too many false finishes. I mean, I know that's TNA at this during this era, but maybe have one and that would have sufficed. I enjoyed the story of Angle doing whatever he could to beat Abyss, pulling out all the stops. Small nitpick. I would have preferred if he had more tried to mat wrestle him at the start of the match and then say, fuck it, this isn't working. I need to fight Abyss at his own game and use weapons and do whatever I can because I'm not going to beat him this way. He's too powerful. Oh, um, terrible idea. I'm going to try beat Abyss at his own game. I know. <laughs> like but, just, uh, no, no, I get oh, you. Oh, sorry. Get, yeah, okay. like if he fails at working yeah. his game, yeah. do Abyss's, but holy shit, what a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, to go straight to that. Yeah. But yeah, uh, wow, incredible. You'll do well to find a better no holds barred match. And it doesn't outstay its welcome. It's just the perfect amount of time. Wow. Top words from a top man. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you think? Absolutely loved this match. Thought it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> For the type of match that they were trying to put on, I thought it was perfect. I don't think there's anything that I'd change about it. Kurt Angle, at this point, is the best wrestler in the world. Abyss was made to look like an absolute powerhouse monster. I love that they went to a part of the impact zone that you never see. That felt fresh also. And Abyss doing a match where he didn't have to rely on his crutch of tacks and glass and blood and weapons. And it was still brilliant. Yeah, as to me, is like a perfect brawling wrestling match. And I absolutely loved it. Hmm. I guess we'll have to agree. To agree. <laughs> uh, oh, man, an exhilarating 17 minutes. I was worried that this wouldn't be good because they just wrestle on impact, which was grand. But I feel a fool for doubting Abyss, who is a highly competent brawler. And Kurt Angle, perhaps the absolute best ever in the history of the sport. This was a main event pay-per-view headliner performance. A career highlight for both. Like, I don't think you could sell a pay-per-view around this feud, Kurt Angle versus Abyss. But my God, these guys over-delivered. Masterclass, lads. Thankfully, we get a little more time post-match. Kurt doesn't know where he is. Eyes are glazed over, but his hand is raised in victory. And our parting thought is that the Mafia are now 2-0. And And think of this. Another victory for the main event Mafia. Kaloran with Samoa Joe. Uh, so yeah, that was an unexpected high. Let's take it down low. Way low. No, no, not really, but we are shifted off to Sour Puss Samoa Joe. <laughs> Sour Puss Samoa Joe. Joe was in the original's locker room alone, uh, apart from Lauren and the TV crew, obviously. <laughs> and Joe calls Nash a petty bitch. He says Kevin stood next to a lot of great men, men you've been bodyguards for, mentors, brothers. Brothers. And Nash can stand being next to greatness. Tonight isn't about respect. Respect. It's about getting even. Good promo. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't like a shouty, quiet promo that that, that that, Joe normally does. Not over the top. Yeah. I know what I need to do tonight, Kev. Because you see, tonight is not about getting respect, Kevin. Tonight is about getting even. It's not a grudge match. It's a regular match. Samoa Joe versus Kevin Nash. Promo package guy. Samoa Joe. Jilted by an ally. Jilted. There's only one noun associated <laughs> with that word. Like a wedding? Like- a jilted lover. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As Nash hogs the half naked man. <laughs> Samoa Joe, jilted by an ally. Nashi in a blistering wolf pack, red and black, and a wee spackle of white. And we see in the crowd, there's an MEM equals respect. No, that, that, was, that was a bit righteous. You I were wasn't doing it? righteous. Yeah. Uh, so in the crowd. Joe comes out sans world title. Hmm. But he's got a new Aztec design on his towel. Huge foreshadowing. foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> Big, bulbous, <laughs> turgid things to come. <laughs> Can I interject? Please do. New segment. You know, I, I love my segments. Oh, I yeah. do, do. You know what went down well was the uh, mid-match questionnary. Yeah, I loved it. I, loved it. I went down well with yeah. me as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am so great. I am so great. Everybody <laughs> loves me. I am so great. <laughs> so we got the OOC interjection, right? So I want like some kind of YouTube thumbnail clickbaity, you know, like there's a Big red arrow pointing to a plane crashing into a toddler, you know that kind of shit. Like, <laughs> you know that oh, kind of clickbaity. Like, 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 give me something big. I want something big. Plus a picture of you in the corner going like, <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. It's always you always have to have a face. Yeah, face, some idiot looking into the middle distance. Yeah, give me that. Okay. I want like plain toddler silly face. Big arrow, right? So O C interjection. <laughs> Now she comes out, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's quite humorous. He's got a pair of red bin bags on his legs, and, <laughs> and away we go into the match. And I was like, I looked out the window, and I was like, it's so lucky we don't do what bar anymore, because you know what? Those two fuckers will cream themselves over what Kevin Nash is wearing. I'm telling you. So I had a little smirk, and I moved on with the rest <laughs> of the show, like we're going to do right now. <laughs> so I just wanted to point out that there will be no what bar for this crazy getup. There and will be no Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> and and away we go. How's the match, Jay? Uh, yeah, kind of barry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little bit watty. A little bit watty. A little bit watty. Uh, a little bit barry. <laughs> Jay! What oh. bar? It's Kevin Nash. Oh, me meow. We did that the wrong way around. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Kevin Nash, he, has, he spent a bit of cashy on a blisteringly luminous red and black He's got a waistcoat, which is quite nice, and a wee spackle of white with his Nashy Superman logo there. What beer is Kevin Nash? Well, Billy Harrison says he is a red diesel truck. Fantastic, um, a mate. Diesel a, a diesel Mack truck. A diesel Mack truck. We can close it down. There you go. <laughs> Aaron Ward Robinson says he is red bin bags. Oh, yeah. he clearly wins. At Grit Van Winkle says he is Ben Gay. <laughs> Have we had <laughs> Ben Gay? A bit of Benji. <laughs> Get up that yard, smell a Benji <laughs> up you. <laughs> At TJ Bloomfield. People even know what we're saying. <laughs> says he is Deep Heat Max, because, you know, he's got to help out those quads, you know. Oh, that that's very clever, mate. Uh, I like yeah. it. See, layers, yeah. layers. This yeah. is what you, you put them it's down. It's missing. Yeah, 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 this is what they're doing. And Jay, Jay, he's only reading out 10. That means there were like what thirteen hundred ninety that were shit. <laughs> <laughs> but of they were like well. mostly like Kit Kats and like yeah, no, no, Twizzlers. No, no. Lots of uh, Britney Spears from the Oops I Do oh, Do The, the, the splicey of that. Playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite one here, Zach Dara says he is. A torn quad. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's so clever, mate. Well done. Is yeah. that from Netter, is it? And then, uh, Steve, because I know that you liked him, I have a couple of Watts Oh, uh, Go on, I'll accept right. the Watts Julian yeah. McSanchez, which is a fucking fabulous name, says he's a packet of Winston. Yeah. At Chris Widness. Says what did he see? He's a packet of Churchman's Tenor cigarettes. Oh, they they look very World War II, don't they? Yeah, Virgil yeah. special kind of... <laughs> Uh, cigarettes here if, if Virgil Can was in World War 2 it'd actually be cheaper if they're only a tenner like. uh, yeah true Richard Drazkovsky Dropazovsky Camel Reds oh, you got the old camel on yeah, it yeah, the old, the old, the old yeah. uh, camels oh, very good. Ryan Fantasia Dunhill Master Blend they look yeah. very fancy yeah. Caleb Smith Captain Black Pipe Tobacco oh cherry flavour that sounds disgusting yeah, I'd give it a go yeah, yeah. 
at Aries underscore Jupiter says he's a packet of Black Devil. They look very classy now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Classy. Classy. And uh, final one, at Connor Cross 99 says he is Rizzler. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And that winds up the what bar slash smokes for Nevin Cash. Samoa Joe is on top of his game. Ding, ding, ding. Punchy Brawly inside, Punchy Brawly outside. Nashi finds a toolbox and pliers. Will he do the kind of clasp the pliers in the nose spot from bottom? <laughs> like Richie and Eddie. Or the one with Big Dave and Hunter from uh, Mania. Do you remember when he pulled out his uh, uh, very good. Uh, nose ring? Well done. No, he removes the top turnbuckle and finds two teeny pads underneath and peels them back too to expose the literal turnbuckle. Immediately, Joe whips him into it, which is quite generous. He kind of gently guides him towards it. Zero reaction from Nash and the crowd. I feel like Joe wasn't supposed to use that corner. It was like he had six to choose from. (laughs) And he picked the one gimmicked one for later. Joe gets up on Brett's rope. It's been dodgy all night. Outsiders picture perfect jumping kick to the face. Joe mounts Nash. MMA training? (laughs) (laughs) No. Look at that pound, then ground attack. (laughs) Poke to the eyes. Nash bails to the outside and would have been greeted with a Samoa Joe dive, but no. Whack with a chair. Whack, whoa, hey, hey. (laughs) Is this an ODQ? No, the ref has to just feign that he wasn't looking right at it. Ugh. Jack, knife, power bomb. Safer than usual. Joe is completely parallel to the mat. Like it. Exposed steel turnbuckle bunk. Ref admonishes Nash, which gives time for Joe to bleed. Jack, knife, power bomb number two. One, two, no. Nash in the mount. MMA training. <laughs> <laughs> no, lol. Joe with, I guess, what's supposed to be an arm bar? Yeah, ref bump. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Nashi folds him up and uses the ropes. One, two, three. And Nashi with the cashy picks up the win after 12 minutes. Wait a minute, he's got his feet on the ropes. He's taking no chances. Oh, and he steals it. I thought the opening of the match was perfect. Joe goes to town on Nashi, and Nashi actually sells it, which is so nice to see. You know, what a gracious, you know, millionaire. It's, 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 it's <laughs> fantastic. A gracious millionaire. <laughs> they must actually be mates then, do you know? Like, yeah. I was thinking, yes, this is what it needed. There's actual proper fucking heat for this match. And Joe is acting on the heat that has been built over the past few weeks. And he wants to kick the shit out of Nash, and he's finally got his hands on him. And then, hold on a second, Nash is taking control of the match? What? I, I know there was the chair shot and all that, but when you don't have interference in a match, in my book, if you go over, it's clean. You could have your foot in the ropes, you could use brass knucks, you could use a chair. It's practically clean, right? Um, you use the resources available to you. Exactly. So you have the very recent world champion, one of the faces of the company. The future of this company. The young faces of the company. Exactly. That you're going to build, you have been building and you will continue to build the company around. Then you've got a part-time wrestler, an old man. And he basically kicks the shit out of Joe. (laughs) You needed Joe to batter Kevin Nash throughout this match. Interference, pipe to the back of the head, whatever it is. Yeah, Steiner, yeah. Yeah. Nash picks up the win with his foot on the ropes. To keep the storyline going, Nash stays strong. Joe looks amazing, and you take it from there. I still quite enjoyed this match. I enjoyed the brutality of it. I think Joe getting colour was absolutely the right decision. But what a missed opportunity. I'm I'm so disappointed. Oh, interesting, interesting. Uh, what do you think? It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Loads of heat. There was a point in the match where the fans turned on Joe, and then they wanted Nash to win more, which I, I, I felt was a bit weird. But my biggest gripe with it is that Kevin Nash shouldn't have won. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to put your new mega heel group over and make them dominant. One of my least favorite finishes in pro wrestling is the baby face that batters someone so much that they lose because the ref goes like, stop, stop, get off, get off. And then they keep on bashing them. And then the ref goes, we're going to reverse the decision and you lose. (laughs) (laughs) I think this is one of the times where that could have worked. 
Mm. Because Joe has been like so... Like Shamrock uh, Rock yeah. Mania 14. Yeah. I think Joe has been so angry and so on edge in the build that I think him snapping and beating Kevin Nash to the point where the referee has to give Nash the win could have worked. You know? Hmm. Can I shock you? Yeah. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> Surprisingly engaging. Apart from the opening punchy brawl. So all of Joe's offense. <laughs> uh, okay, it was all storyline developments using plunder. And it bloody worked. And there was heat. Shame Nash was the baby face to the crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was all engaging. And it flowed very well one spot into the next until the finish. And the big takeaway this was a clean win, Joe. You can't complain. This is as clean as heels win. So, fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, oh, no, I thought it was great. Well done, Kevin Nash. Uh, and more than that, if I, if I uh, you know the spot where Joe was doing the dive and Kevin Nash hit him with the chair? Mm-hmm. What was Joe doing? Because... <laughs> <laughs> the <Fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The angles don't add up. <laughs> Kevin Nash was hiding be- behind <laughs> one of the posts. And so Joe Joe's <laughs> would have had to a sprint, right? <laughs> Dive through and have a strong gust of wind <laughs> carry him backwards <laughs> to land. Yeah. I just thought it made him look like a bit of an idiot. I did it for his own good. I did it to try to help him. That's all I've ever tried to do. Even now, believe it or not, even now, I'm trying to help him, but he spits in my face every single time. Our final backstage interview of the night, JB is with a solemn sitting sting. JB asks him, any regrets about bringing up AJ's father? He says, no regrets at all. You have to look back to move forward. Even now, even after he spit in my face, I'm still trying to help him out. AJ's dad kicked him out of the house when he was 15. I'm going to kick him out of my house tonight. That's a great line, lads. Oh man, I love this conflicted sting angle where you feel that the main event mafia, to him, is more of a necessary evil. That he's sick of doing things the nice way. He's been getting nowhere with it for years. But uh, uh, Other right. than being champion multiple, multiple times, times and going over a the biggest company. show every single year. Uh, it's peanuts, peanuts. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but there is a very real threat to the storyline, which is Steve Borden doesn't want to do overtly heel stuff, like battering Christian on the way out. So this is what the product is. But for me, it works. It's a layer of intrigue, like how the Motor City Machine Guns are bratty heels in the face group. Sting doesn't believe he's 100% black hat. This, what we just saw, is a heel promo, just not to him. Tonight, I'm going to kick him out of my house. Seven matches down, one match left, because it's time for your main event. (laughs) It's your main event. For the TNA World title, it's the phenomenal AJ Styles versus the champion, the Icon Sting. Oh man, just really looking forward to this. How do they sell this on the Go Home Impact? Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Styles. Promoting Foley calling out AJ. Why? At the top of Impact, they showed up together having ridden to the arena. 12 hour round trip no time to tell (laughs) in the ring Sting interrupts both and reaffirms his position he respects Mick as a wrestler respect 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 Respect. what he's done for the industry and respect respect what he's trying to do here in TNA it's what he tried to do and he's been trying for three years and got nowhere like he will just watch they'll disrespect you like they disrespect Disrespect. Like they disrespected. Disrespect. Me. <laughs> <laughs> TNA originals want to be coddled, fed with a silver spoon. If they don't get what they want, bombs, threats. AJ, you're never wrong. You're always right. And your dad was right to kick you out of the house when you were 15. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're always right. He's always wrong. You know something? Your dad had every right to kick you out of the house when you were 15 years old, AJ. I don't quite like that. That's pure heel work there. Uh, also, Silver Spoon, so disingenuous and hypocritical considering Sting's lengthy WCW main event status. He was challenging Flair for the NWA world title a year into his WCW career in 88. <laughs> and his generous TNA contract, it's so large, Spike TV has to help pay for it. Over a million dollars and is the highest paid wrestler on the roster and would stay that way for years. And rarely does house shows, only the really big ones, like when they go to New York or to the UK. And then he finishes with like, what's little AJ gonna do when he sees his dad throw a tantrum? Ah, pure out and out heel here. Press the nuclear option. Great, clever heel work here to completely throw AJ off his game. Make him emotional so he makes mistakes in the ring. Mm -hmm. Bang! Oh, get in. Champion and challenger. You hear the opening bell for our Turning Point main event with so very much at stake. You know the way there's ominous people in attendance of a big match sometimes, like King of the Ring 93 has a giant Hulkamaniac in the crowd, you know? There's a photographer with like a shock up blonde. His brill- Yeah, just half him. hair. Yeah, it's, it's this Brillo pad gelled hair quaff. I was like, who are you, man? <laughs> Stop taking attention away with your hair. <laughs> it's <laughs> luminous. Beautiful. It's the hair that only Sid Justice could have dreamed of. <laughs> uh, question for you here. Sting's bodysuit. Yeah. Uh, mm. Okay, I, I understand. Sorry, can you see that as well? I'm guessing you're talking about his Mickey. Well, I, the underst- piece. I understand the knee pads. Yep. Why does he have the thigh pads? Oh, you're not even going straight to the... Okay. I I haven't reached the equator yet. You're going from the bottom up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What are you doing? What attack are you preventing? Does he do atomic drops? No. But that would be padding. That would be less painful for Mm. the opponent at that point. I'm I'm tapping my nose. So are we going kayfabe or... Please, please kayfabe. I want all my answers in kayfabe. (laughs) AJ likes to kick. So it's like extra padding from like high leg kicks. But why does he not have padding on his arms at all? This is the thickest muscle that he has. Yeah, It'd be yeah. the worst place to kick. Do you know what I mean? Like why on his, his belly welly or his back or his shoulders or his arms? Why doesn't he wear like a scrum cap? <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. If we were in Florida in 2008, we'll bring a scrum cap. <laughs> Paint a little stinger on it. Here you go. <laughs> Wrestlers should wear that. They should. Uh, you finished there? You, yeah. Nothing uh, else to just, say about the outfit there? Uh, just a, a minor quibble. Go on, yeah. <laughs> nice crotch guard here. <laughs> pointed like a beak. <laughs> That's, you know, ready to chirp here. You can't look. Ready to chirp. <laughs> what is it? I don't know, Jay. Why Why have we all just noticed this? Are we suggesting that he normally doesn't have this outfit? It's because for the first 10 minutes of this match, it's just abdominal stretches and rest holds and wrist locks. So you're just looking at his beak. Because he got nothing his, else his lower to do. Horn. Like, yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. And your mind wanders immediately because yeah. he's not doing anything. Uh, oh, well, what will he do? Stinger press slams AJ out of the ring and splats down on the mat. He's got him off. Where's he going to toss it? Oh, oh, man. That was nice. Man, you could break an arm if it's not in the correct place, you know? But is AJ Styles? He's phenomenal. <laughs> We're brawling out by Army Dude from earlier. It's like, oh, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Nobody asked you to, but, you know. <laughs> it would be hilarious if they bundled him off with the JCP or the ICP. <laughs> yeah, you, know? yeah. oh, F- <laughs> you too. <laughs> I like it's just, as opposed to like you know NXT where they have those ringside seats where they show oh people have shown up and then they show that area later in the night and they're gone. Yeah. Edge. <laughs> oh yeah. It's all Sting in control, which is mostly Me. never-ending abdominal stretches and cutting off AJ's comebacks. Scorpion Deathlock. Nah, booked off, but dodges a splash and hits a death drop. Stinger with a flying nothing. AJ Styles Clash? Twinkled holes, twiddled kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Learning from the best. <laughs> uh, Brett's rope, sunset flip, powerbomb? 
okay, but it's going to be low and slow. <laughs> Spiral Tap by AJ. Oh, see, that's one in your arsenal, isn't it? Spiral Tap, yeah. 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 I mean, they yeah. can pull that edge on me to do it now. Yeah, yeah, just there. What? You can't, you can't prove that he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> onto the table as well. Yeah, Jesus, that That's hurt. It. Oh, this is the death blow right here. If he hits it, this is an unbelievable skill move. And, oh, wait a minute. Main event mafia well, coming they- down. And Angle gets knocked out. Whack <laughs> Kurt Angle and Booker T hoof it to the ring. Distraction isn't successful as a Pele. No. Dodge, Stinger scrambles for an Oklahoma roll, and my eyes widen as it's cinched in tight. One, two, three. Ah, that was the finish. As AJ <laughs> Styles gawks in disbelief, he's just got outsmarted. Not only does Sting remain, he and a world heavyweight champion, but the main event mafia just swept the board at turning point. I wasn't expecting a lot from this match, and I got what I expected. It was okay. It was fine. It lived down to expectations. Yeah, like, it was fine. I mean, Sting can only do so much. Nashi pleasantly surprised us in terms of what he could do in the last match. Sting did what he do- normally does at the age of 50 or whatever age he is. Nice to see him in shape, though. This is pre-T-shirt Sting, <laughs> yeah. you know? Pre-T-shirt yeah. Sting. He covered the beak. That must be uh, why we didn't really yeah. notice. Yeah, yeah. So, fair enough. They wanted interference in this match. They wanted Sting to win. And Sting should win this match and keep the belt. It's far too early to change it. But they wanted to keep AJ strong, get that. He, he could have taken a clean loss here. After having a back and forth match, Sting is the world champion after all. He just beat Joe last month. Uh, so there's no shame in losing to Sting. It's okay, AJ can go away and beat another 10 wrestlers and come back for another chance. It's fine. But overall, it was a decent match, nothing special. Hmm. I think for your main event, I have a certain level that I want the match to be, and I don't think this got there. AJ is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Sting is okay, you know what I mean? Like Sting is capable of having a decent match, but... I think it wasn't the like moves, it was the layout of this match which kind of got me because I thought Sting battered AJ. I thought he out-wrestled him, I thought he out-muscled him, I thought he outsmarted him and he basically beat him at every single facet of wrestling and I just thought AJ came out of this match looking kind of eh? Him and Joe, they're meant to be the two great hopes for TNA and I don't think this pay-per-view did them like any favours <laughs> at all. And I don't think that the month of build to the show did them any favours at all. And uh, I'll let you know, the following ones didn't do them <laughs> any favours <laughs> at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, disappointing. It was like a slightly better than television main event, and that was about it. Hmm. Yeah, man, what a shame. Main event couldn't live up to the undercard, or even an average AJ Styles match. And I place the blame squarely on Stinger. And of course, this is dependent on like the match quality that I saw. But it was like, if this is what you're going to serve up, why didn't Scott Steiner run in? He did nothing tonight. He's the hitman. Be useful. Yeah. This helps you, mate. Like he literally yeah. debuted about 10 days earlier and he's your hitman. And like, uh, hit people. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, the match was so disappointing, but storyline-wise, it's all gone great. A clean sweep, 4-0 for the main event mafia, showing the heels as dominant and successful will rally the good guys to buckle down and come together to face the insurmountable onslaught of crafty veterans, and hopefully join them on their level. Heels celebrate in ring as Stinger and Nashi Wolfpack, too Too sweet. sweet! Whilst outside, AJ admonishes himself, and let's hear from Tanae closes out for the night as all five members have different fucking hand signals. Get it together, lad. <laughs> <laughs> totally dominant. The main event mafia remain in power. They remain in control tonight at Turning Point. Nashi is, is giving it a proper go, though, isn't he? Uh, he's doing like kind of gang signs right oh is he Kurt is doing it right Kurt is definitely doing it it's the three is the M though but he, yeah. he's doing four okay uh, so like he just hasn't kind of crossed the, the middle fingers yet that's difficult but 
you know who's and Booker T has his own thing. Yeah. He does. He has his own thing. But like, I love Steiner's. Just like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> we are the nation. Of the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible. Anyway, so let's take it to the aftermath. <laughs> Ooh, welcome to the aftermath. Oh, see, mm. mate, what did you think of TNA Turning Point? I thought it was a very solid pay per view. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as Bound for Glory. Abyss Angle obviously stole the show. Incredible match. So we got eight matches, mostly ranging from solid to good, and over three hours. I mean, that is the perfect length and girth for a pay per view. <laughs> Well, either that or 14 hours over two days. <laughs> uh, but um, Which V1 did for the show. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. of course you did. Yeah. Well, um, it was like three days. Okay, show. yeah, yeah. But I'd definitely recommend watching the show. It's free on YouTube. I have nothing else. I watch Angle vs. Abyss. Okay. I thought the show was very good. Definitely not as good as last month's show, but that's their mania. So, you know, like that's absolutely fine. This is their backlash, and so you've kind of got to judge it on like that kind of level. The X Division match was excellent opener. The women's match was good. The tag match was awesome. The Abyss Kurt Angle match was incredible. And then the, the last three were like a mixed bag. Christian Booker was fine. Nashi and Joe was better than I thought, and it was a disappointing main event. And then we had Bashir and Rhino, which was eh. look any show that has at least one match that's as good as that Angle match. You have to check it out. Yeah. So yeah, definitely recommend. TNA is fun to watch. <laughs> and I'm really, really digging this. Yeah. Cool. Mostly the same. Uh, the main thing is like Sting. Come on, man. Letting down the team. Everybody overperformed here, except for you and Raisha Saeed. <laughs> Like, apart from that really enjoyable pay-per-view, man, incredible performance by Kurt Angle, 10 pole match of TNA and Angle's career. Only minor quibble, which is a thing with TNA, is that the leader of the main event mafia was booked as an explosive baby face and was cheered, much like Nash. Like, they didn't even get the, let's go, Joe, let's go, Nash. It was just, no, Nash. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Big Kev was just more over. Well done to Big Kev, by the way. Well done. The problem with having an awesome heel faction is that fans respond to talent and intrigue and successful wrestlers. Best of luck to the baby faces. But hey, you want your spot, right? Fucking earn it. I'm rooting for you and I want to see how you respond. Uh, sorry, Steve, you wanted to cover Christian's final show and the December pay-per-view, right? So, Brucey bonus! Impact Fallout and Final Resolution up next. Great, I love it. In a few weeks when your contract expires, you are gonna jump ship to the WWE. So, DNA Turning Point is on the books. In the pocket. Here to say. How did that one go for you, sir? A real good show, a real good show. Yeah, yeah. A real good I think it was nice, it was like cohesive, I think pretty high energy, pretty, you know, invested in the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was Coco, it was Owen. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was Owen. And, and, Steve, and Steve is Aaron, and Steve is the. Oh! And there we go, you see. Well, you, uh, it's, we're always referencing high energy in this arc. We're just making noises, I think, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's yeah. the barrel, there's the bottom of it. Here's here's a like a, we're, a ladle. We're, you know we're scraping. kind of floating around the top at the moment. Don't worry. By the end of this arc, we will be done and want fucking out. <laughs> 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 and yeah, we'll want something completely different. But right now, I'm very much enjoying it. Mm. Yeah, you enjoy that one? Yeah, have a I good did, time. I did. I had loads of fun talking about that. Yeah, it's great being in TNA. It really yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. We're all such like super fans, you know, you know, we're like super positive. Even the stuff that's not great, we're like looking for the positives. Hmm. I think it's a positive, like it's a good thing to like that kind of mindset in general, especially yeah. with wrestling. Like, you, do. you know, we're not getting blood from a stone, real. There is good stuff to be had there. So if you want to keep this gravy train going, we have, ooh, Cadbury. <laughs> Mini Cadbury. 
We got some weird Kit Kats. Robin eggs from the makers of Whoppers. Melted milk bars. What's a Whopper? Oh, other than a burger. There's a, a Trader Joe's Swiss milk chocolate. Oh, Trader Joe. <laughs> Trader Joe. <laughs> Best mates with Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Um, uh, you can uh, just keep our gravy train going and see some episodes before the copyright is released and they can go live and so you, you know we get all of the OSW goodness that isn't live yet on YouTube you can slip us a couple of books and watch them at noggeru.oswreview.com so it's a goodbye from V1 take our boo Pussy. Yep. and myself the two and a half time golden nogger award winner Jay Hunter and remember a winner is you Ha, 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 